Here's a classic Amazon interview question. 50% of all people who receive a first interview receive a second interview. 95% of people who get a second interview felt good about the first interview. 75% of people who did not get a second interview felt they had a good first interview. If you feel like you had a good first interview, what's the probability you receive a second interview? We've all had an interview we left feeling great or terrible, and this question gets at the heart of like, how often that means you will get a second interview or make it to the next round. So I think we can all relate to this question. Um, let's go ahead and look at what the odds are in each of these different examples. So one way we can think about this uh, and a very common tactic for any of these conditional probability questions is to kind of divide things into this tree space. So I'm gonna make up some easy to use numbers for this, but um, I think it'll give a good visual and a good perspective for how you can solve these types of questions. So the first part here is imagine um, imagine 200 people interview and we uh, split them into those people who interview who get a second interview and those people who interview and don't get a second interview. So let's imagine this group is like second interview and um, I'll just put not uh, over here. So these, the people who make it through this tree branch get a second interview and the people who don't make it through uh, to the second round go over here. So imagine we have like 200 people and uh, since 50% make it to the second interview and 50 do not, you can imagine that 100 of the individuals end up coming through this branch and 100 individuals end up going through this one. And then the second part is basically like, did you feel good about the interview or not? So if you got a second interview, what we know is that 95, I've five and these people felt good about it and these didn't um right so of the 100 that made it to a second round 95 of them felt good five of them did not of the individuals who did not get a second interview 75 of them felt good and 25 of them did not so good not this whiteboard uh, uh i smeared up pretty good but so the idea is you make it to the second round or don't, and you felt good about it or you didn't. So that's both of these, and I was not consistent at all, but these, the two Gs here are the same thing, and the didn't and the N are the same thing here. And so the question is, what's the probability you'll receive a second interview if uh, you felt good? So what we know is the people who felt good are these people right here, and the people who received a second interview are, are uh, basically these people over here. But the ones who felt good and received a second interview is just this group here. So the chance that you feel good and receive a second interview is 95. And the chance that you felt good at the end is 95 plus 75. Right? And this is the probability that you get a second interview given that you felt good. Right? This is you felt good and you received a second interview. This is you felt good and received a second interview. This is you felt good, but you didn't receive a second interview, right? So there's, these are all the ways that you felt good. These are the ways that you felt good and you actually got that second interview. If you saw the video on the Facebook question, you'll notice that this fraction looks very similar. In that one, it was the probability of rain, yes, yes, yes. Probability of not rain, yes, yes, yes. And then the probability of rain, yes, yes, yes. And this is the same, it's like probability of felt good and got a second interview, probability of felt good and didn't get a second interview, probability of felt good and got a second interview. So this, the way that this fraction is divi divided, like feels good, feels good and got a second interview. And then the other one, it was like, yes, 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 and it rains. So um, those same components uh, are drawn in both of these questions. It's a very common way to sort of think about this is like, the total probability of what you're interested in is in the denominator and then the condition that you care about. So in this case, like that you actually got a second interview is what you care about shows up again in the numerator. So I think it's really important to understand these con conditional probability rules just as like an idea of, uh, of how to think about the world. So if you saw the, um, the, the material on bootstrapping, um, I'm a big believer in that the main things to take away from statistics are how to think about problems. 
And these conditional probability rules are just a way of thinking through problems. Um, and the hardest part in the real world is often how do you take a problem space and then think about it in the right ways to get to a solution that makes sense. Sometimes our intuition will take us in the wrong way. And it's important that you kind of know what rules exist so that you follow those rules and draw in your conclusions rather than just like, hey, I think I have a gut feeling that this is the right direction. And you follow that into the completely wrong way that you should be going. Um, building your intuition, building your, uh, your gut feeling based on certain probability rules, conditional probability rules, is a better way to, to arrive at correct answers. Uh, in the workplace and and often with other decisions that you're going to make. So I think it's it's super valuable to to have these conditional probabilities, sort of like the rules associated with them in your back pocket. Um, almost everything that we do has a conditional rule associated with it. Um, almost nothing is uh, cleanly independent. And so um, understanding how when I move lever A, that impacts lever B is a really important tool to arrive at um, anything in the workplace. Uh, being able to draw these sort of tree diagrams to try to understand how the pieces of your puzzle fit together and what things are pushing the next things um, is like a, a really useful way to think about all the problems. We could actually, again, if you saw the Facebook interview question, we could have actually drawn that out in a tree diagram too. It just would have been a lot longer because you would go through every single friend, uh, right? You have three friends, so each one of them would get a new branch. With this one, it's a little simpler because there's just two parts to it. Often when you look at conditionals, you might find uh, surprising results because you are failing to think about that condition at the beginning. Um, so you might think something is super, super rare, but then within some condition, it's actually not that rare. It's maybe a majority. So it could be, um, you could imagine we have some case where you're like, uh, I think that, uh, I think that all people in this department of the company are, are like this. But then, uh, if you were to, and, or all people in certain locations do X thing, but there's actually some other condition there that's what drives uh, people to fall into that group that isn't related to your initial judgment at all. So um, I think that uh, both you will potentially find something surprising where it's like, oh, I don't think this characteristic exists. And then you find some condition that breaks it out and you find that that condition is actually really prominent or vice versa. You think that something is highly prominent in a group, but you actually can find some condition and it's like, oh no, it's only prominent in this very small subset of that group. And this an other entire condition is, is, not, um, is not associated with that at all. So uh, having some troubles finding exact tangible things. But, uh, but yeah, I think the big thing there is you have a condition and maybe within that condition, um, something is high, like a high significance but then if you look at a broader group, it's not, or vice versa.